So this is chapter 20 in the new book. So skin is mainly what we're going to talk about. So the first disease I have in here is an oh shoot, cancel is um is anthrax. Hold on a minute, I gotta get the pen. Okay, and I don't know why the background looks blue. I don't know what that's about. Okay, so anyhow, anthrax is also known as wool sorters disease. It's caused by Bacillus anthraxis. One of the reasons we talk about it is because it's been used as a biological weapon. Um, anthrax is found in the soil and that has spores, right? Because it's a bacillus species. So it has spores that can live for a really long time. So people, it is endemic in some places and in some um, groups. So it's people that work with sheep, often they can get it. Okay, so there's um, three different clinical forms. So there's cutaneous, which is 90% of the cases. So it's just in the skin. You start to get, um, you start to get these sores that actually don't hurt, but they look really bad um, two to five days after exposure. Okay, then it, there's intestinal, which is another 5% of the cases. And it comes from meat, so they eat cheese that has the spores in it. The fatality rate, if it's not treated, is 25 to 50%. So it kind of presents as food poisoning. And then there's respiratory or pulmonary anthrax, which is almost always fatal. So they get a fever, cough, and they can't recover from it. The symptom is if they do a chest x-ray, the mediastinum looks enlarged. Okay, so it's common in animals. Um, it's less common in humans. They do vaccinate for people who are in high-risk jobs, like someone that works with sheep or um, military personnel that might be exposed to a biological weapon. Okay, so the thing that's scary about it, so it was used in 2001. There were, it's called, it was called Amerithrax. So Amerithrax, you can, you can Google it on the FBI website. Um, in 2001, there was a scientist that was actually shipping the spores around. So it was first weaponized after World War II. It's really, you can grow a whole bunch of the organism up and then change the environmental conditions and have them produce spores. And then you can dry the spores. So all it takes, you can inhale, like, you can inhale 8,000 to 50,000 spores in like, just like a, a little teeny tiny amount, right? So it's like a talcum powder and they put it in a letter. Um, so in 2001, someone was mailing it to, I think they mailed it to news organizations, they mailed it to senators, congressmen. Um, the people that were getting it from the mailing were a lot of times were postal workers. But if you read about the case, it actually, it was... The strain that was mailed was was tracked back to Fort Detrick and Frederick. So it's it's kind of interesting to read about the whole thing. The um, scientists that they believe did it um, committed suicide before um, they could actually file charges against him. Okay, now... In 1979, the Russians had an outbreak, and it, it killed 77 out of the 88 people that were um, infected with it. They, the U.S. believes that the spores were accidentally released as part of, like, the bioweapons, but the Russians say that it was food poisoning and, like, all these people ate the same food. So you can get online and read about it. It's interesting. Okay, now another disease that you probably won't see a lot of in the United States that is like a historical disease is leprosy. So leprosy is also called Hansen's disease. So the organism is Mycobacterium leprae. So you should remember that Mycobacterium are acid fast. Okay, so they don't, you can't gram stain them. They have a capsule and they grow really, really, really slow. Okay, so like 14 days to double, two weeks to double. So these organisms do really well in cool parts of the body, such as like the nose, the fingertips, the ears. Okay, so places where the body's cooler is where the organism's going to grow. So then people lose, um, like they have neuropathy, so they lose nerve sensitivity 
in those body parts and then they can eventually lose those body parts. Okay, so there are 750,000 new cases per year in the world. Okay, there's not many cases in the U.S. Most of these are people that are immigrating to the U.S. Um, a lot of the cases are in Madagascar, Mozambique, Tanzania, Nepal. So there are, it is, it's, is out there, it's just not in the United States as much. Okay, so it's not highly contagious, so it got a bad, kind of got a bad rap because everyone thought it was super duper contagious, and they, so they put people in leper colonies to um, separate them or quarantine them from everyone else. So if you're in contact with it a lot, like if you're treating somebody's wounds that have it, it you, you could definitely get it, though. Okay, so two clinical forms, so one is called benign tuberculoid, which um, you can't get the bacteria back, back out of it, and the skin loses pigment and sensitivity. So they, these people could like spontaneously recover. But the, it's crazy, the incubation period is two to five years. Okay, now the, the kind that they like really put with leprosy, okay, so this nodular form, the incubation period is a really long time, like nine to 12 years, and they get granulomas, so the organism gets in a certain part of the tissue and gets walled off. So the bacteria gets shed in um, the cough and sputum, okay, and in pus from the lesions, okay. And there's a lot, there should be 10 to the 9th, okay, bacteria cells per gram of tissue. So they lose nerve response, okay. So kind of like someone that has diabetes and they can't feel when they hurt their foot, Right? And then they get a secondary infection, and then they lose that, that toe or whatever. So there's no vaccine for leprosy, but there, are, there is a way to treat it, and they do multi-drug therapy. Um, this, patient, this guy, this was before treatment, and this was after treatment, so the, the um, nodules got smaller. Okay, you can go, if you're interested in it, you can. There was, in Hawaii... There was an island where they sent all of their people with leprosy to. It's called Molokai. I don't know if I'm spelling this right. Some, something like that. But um, it just has an interesting history. So they banished kind of people, anybody that had symptoms of what they thought was leprosy to Molokai so that it wouldn't spread and kill off the native population. So they had had other diseases come through and kill a lot of them. So when they when leprosy appeared, they were like, we're not taking any risks. So they'd send them to um, Molokai. So there's just interesting history about Molokai. Okay, now other um, skin infections. So Staph aureus, okay, can cause all sorts of problems. One of the reasons it's such a good pathogen is because it can make all these different enzymes. Okay, so it causes, um, it can release coagulase, right, which can form a clot in blood. It has beta-lactamase, so it doesn't, it is resistant to penicillin. Um, it has staphylokinase, which can break down blood clots hyaluronidase so that it can actually digest the connective tissue and lipase so it breaks down fat. Okay, so it it has the potential to cause a lot of problems. Okay, so one vocabulary word in here is pyoderma. So that is um anytime you have this this pyo, it's pus. Okay, so it's a skin infection with pus. Okay, so Staph also produces more exotoxins, so it releases um, um, a toxin that destroys white blood cells. It releases hem hemolysin, which destroys red blood cells, and then it releases these enterotoxins. So the enterotoxins, if they're ingested, cause diarrhea, so it causes, um, causes like food poisoning. Okay, so the staph gets in the food, it starts growing, multiplying in the food, the food, um, the staph releases toxins, okay, and then the toxins are what make you sick. 
Okay, now another thing that's caused by staph that's not necessarily skin is toxic shock syndrome. Okay, so toxic shock syndrome is a staph infection and it's associated with tampons. Okay, so what happened, I think it was in the 70s and the 80s, they made um, extra absorbent tampons that people could keep in for a long time and the staph bacteria would grow in them and then they would release the toxins and the toxins would call hot, cause a high fever, rash, vomiting, diarrhea, and the mortality rate was super duper high. Okay, so now the um, there's way less cases and there's education about it. The tampons are made differently, so there's not as many cases of it. But the problem is the mortality is super high. Why that is why you hear about it all the time. Okay, now uh, more staph infections. So. An abscess is a deep, big, pus-filled infection. Okay, so that's that's abscess. Okay, now this picture, like this isn't formatted right, but you guys are used to it by now. Okay, so um, I always learned impetago when we talked about it, but if you say it the way the book says it, it's impetigo. Okay, so this is actually staph and strep infection. It's in kids. And it's highly contagious, so kids can spread it to each other. It can be treated with antibiotics, but they have a yellow-brown crust around their mouth and around their nose. Okay, so then another skin infection caused by Staph aureus is folliculitis or pimples. Okay, so it's a pimple or a pustule. Okay, they can lead to boils or furuncles, which is an exterior abscess. And then a carbuncle is when more than one boil kind of coalesce and become come together. You can give staff to other people. Lots of times if someone has a boil, they're just drained and they don't necessarily need antibiotics. It just depends on whether it's coming back or not. Okay, scalded skin syndrome is found in infants. Um, it starts out as it's re like red rash around the nose and the mouth, and eventually what it does is it spreads to the whole body, and the kids get like this these real soft um, like blisters or vesicles all over the body, and that's from staph. The mortality is low. It looks really bad. Um, the toxins, the exotoxins produced by the staph then cause the skin to exfoliate, so it just kind of like like you peel. Okay, now staph can go systemic, okay, so it can get in the bloodstream, it can cause problems with the, the bone and the muscle, it can cause meningitis, it can actually cause arthritis, and it could cause pneumonia. Okay, so staph, it's everywhere, but if it gets in the wrong place at the wrong time, then we have, we have problems. Okay, now... I'm going to talk about strep here because this is kind of how we do the labs. Okay, it doesn't really have anything to do with skin right now, but we're going to talk about it. Okay, so strep, um, there are two respiratory pathogens that are important. So one is called strep pyogenes, which are long chains, okay, and the other is streptococcus pneumonia, which is um, usually in little pairs, okay. Okay, so then we talked about this in lab. So there are hemolysis patterns for strep. Okay, so alpha hemolysis, alpha hemolysis means that the hemoglobin is incompletely broken down, so it looks green. Um, examples of that are strep pneumonia. Um, it can cause pneumonia. It can cause meningitis. It can cause an ear infection. Okay, beta hemolysis is a complete breakdown. Okay, so that can, um, those are further subdivided into Lance field groups. Okay, so, and this is spelled wrong, it should be pyogenes. Okay, so group A is strep pyogenes, which causes strep throat. Group B is strep agalacte, which can cause neonatal pneumonia. So they worry about it, um, they swab the mom before she gives birth to look for it, and then they'll prophylactically um, treat the mom to keep the baby from getting it. 
Okay, and then group C, which isn't common in humans. So there's different there's different um, Lance field groups. There's also a D and a G. Okay, and um, another strep has no hemolysis, so we call that gamma hemolysis. And the organism that we talk about to describe it is called strep um, phacalis. Okay, so these Lance field groups are used to describe group B streps. Okay, so um, strep pyogenes falls under that. Okay, so strep pyogenes can cause scarlet fever, which is a rash. Okay, um, rheumatic fever, which is when the heart valves are damaged. Okay, and then acute glomerular nephritis, which is damage of the, the glomerulus in the kidneys. Okay, now strep pyogenes is the one that's sensitive to bacitracin. Okay, um, strep produces exotoxins too and enzymes that increase its pathogenicity. So there's an exotoxin, okay? That exotoxin can um, lead to toxic shock syndrome. It's what causes the symptoms of scarlet fever. Um, it causes, there's an erythrogenic toxin, which causes the rash. It makes streptokinase, which will dissolve blood clots, and then hyaluronidase, which will break down connective tissue. Okay, so strep diseases, okay, so they can do different different things, okay, so they can have directly invade and cause an infection. They can produce toxins, and then it's kind of like food poisoning or it's an intoxication, and they can also cause autoimmune diseases to occur. Okay, so if we have direct invasion, one thing that we see is impetigo, okay, or impetigo. So that's the rash. So staph and strep together can cause that rash in kids. Okay, another direct invasion caused by strep is erysipelas. They used to call it St. Anthony's fire. So it's a hemolytic strep. That's what this guy has in this picture. So how is all the little capillaries are breaking in his face. Okay, it's it was around a lot, okay, but something changed in the organism, so it's rare now. So the, the organism was infected with a phage, and then the phage caused it to produce a toxin. Okay, so something changed, or the, the bacteria evolved, so they don't have those symptoms anymore. Okay, and then the third thing that's on here is severe rapid, rapid necrotizing fasciitis, which is flesh-eating bacteria. Okay, so part of group A strep, there's a phage, okay, and what happens is the bacteria, they start breaking down the tissue, and they spread really fast. Okay, now an example of an intoxication caused by strep is scarlet fever. Okay, so this strep are infected by a phage, okay, and the it causes them to produce an erythrogenic toxin, okay? And so that's what causes the rash. Scarlet fever isn't around as much anymore either. Sometimes kids have it with a strep infection, but not as often as it used to be. Okay, so symptoms, you have the strep, sore throat, swollen glands, fever, and then they get the rash on their torso. And this guy's got it on his arms. Okay, now an example of a destructive immune reaction Okay, so what happens? So these are that's the glomerular nephritis and rheumatic fever. Okay, so basically what happens is your body makes antibodies towards strep antigens, and the antibodies actually then start attacking your heart valve and the joint antigens. Okay, so the what's in your heart valve and your joint cross react 
with the antibodies that are made by um, made against strep. Okay, so then it starts damage. You're attacking your own body basically. So rheumatic fever and then this glomerular nephritis. Is there there autoimmune diseases that occur as a result of strep infection. Okay, now burns. Okay, so what organisms cause problems in burns? The big, the big concern is Pseudomonas aeruginosa. So if you guys go back and think about it, that's a gram-negative rod. It doesn't make any spores, but it's really resistant to antibiotics. Okay, so it causes a lot, a lot of problems. Okay, you, they can also find serratia and this providencia in there too. But Pseudomonas is the big one. Okay, now with burns, what happens is you get a scab or a, a scar that forms over the burns. Okay, and that interferes with um, the treatment and getting the antibiotic in. So what they'll do is they'll debride or remove the, the scab, right, to get the treatment to work. They've been working on a lot of skin cell replacements. So instead of just doing a skin graft, they'll do... Um, they use fish cells like tilapia. They'll they'll do a bunch of different. They have a bunch of different um, ways to make a skin graft. Okay, now viral skin diseases. So we have two types of measles that I have on this one chart. Okay, so we have rubella, which is German measles, and we have rubiola, which is like regular measles. Okay, so German measles is caused by a toga virus, where rubiella, or regular measles, is a paramyxovirus. Okay, now, German measles is a mild disease. It causes a flat skin rash, but it's not mild if it in, infects a pregnant woman in the first two months of the pregnancy. Okay, so then it can cause problems in the baby, in the fetus, okay? So there could be miscarriage, there could be um, neural problems. Okay, so it's highly contagious, it's transmitted through respiratory, through, you know, coughing, stuff like that. The incubation is two to three weeks, and we prevent it with a vaccine that's called MMR. So MMR is against measles, mumps, and rubella. Okay, so measles, mumps, and rubella. Okay, now measles is actually considered the fifth leading killer of children. Okay, so symptoms of it is a raised skin rash. You have cold-like symptoms. You get white spots in your throat. But the problem is, is it can kind of, it can go systemic, so it can invade the lungs, um, the kidneys, and the brain, and cause, that's when it gets bad and causes death. Okay, it is super, super, super contagious. Okay, so if you're exposed to somebody and you're not vaccinated, there's like a 99% chance that you're going to get it um, if, they, if they breathe on you. Okay, um... The problem is that it kills children, okay? If everyone's vaccinated for it, we're, we're in good shape. But lately, people haven't been vaccinating. And countries like, like the Democratic Republic of Congo, um, they don't have the vaccine to give to the children, okay? So measles are going. They're, the number of measles cases is really, really high for 2019, Okay, so here's just the, um, the Copelic spot is these white spots. And he, you can see his rash. Okay, so then herpes, skin diseases. Okay, so remember herpes is a, is a latent organism. Okay, so it's going to get in your body and you're going to keep it <laughs> forever. Okay, so it's going to be in there all the time. Um, there's two types, those herpes simplex virus 1 and 2. 1 used to be associated with cold sores strictly, and 2 was with genital herpes. But now, either one can be found either place. Okay, now another herpes viridae skin disease is chickenpox. 
Okay, and we talked about chicken pox before. So chicken pox is caused by the virus called varicella zoster. Um, once you get it, it stays in your body forever. Okay, um, it causes shingles, okay, as an adult. Um, so incidence and transmission, so respiratory droplets, it takes two days to get the rash after you've been exposed if you get it. Okay, so they are try to treat with antivirals, and now we um, vaccinate against it to try to keep people from getting the shingles as they get older. Okay, there's other pox viruses. Smallpox, they say, has been totally eradicated, but I'm not sure that that's 100% true. Um, it's the virus is variola. Okay, so it's super duper virulent. It causes toxemia and shock. The rash is really can be really bad. Um, it's transmitted through the scabs on the skin and respiratory droplets, but um, it's it's been eradicated. So no one's supposed to have it anymore. But you can you can Google that too because it seems that some places have it have it still in storage. Okay, now monkeypox is a zoonotic disease that is out there. Um, they smallpox vaccine. If you've been vaccinated against smallpox, you're protected against monkeypox. Monkeypox doesn't usually go to humans. Okay, now fungal skin diseases, you can read it in the book about them. So there's three different fungi that usually cause fungal skin diseases. So like epidermophytin, microsporin, and trichophytin. Okay, now one skin disease that can be pretty common is ringworm. Oh, what did I do? How did I do that? I don't know how to re to get rid of it. <laughs> That's funny. All right. Oh, well. Okay, ringworm. Okay, so ringworm, it has this tinea, T-I-N-E-A. Okay, so t that's, that's the ringworm. Okay, and then the different body parts where it happens, they have a, they have a different name. So ringworm is, is super contagious. You can get it from pets. Okay, so it's zoonotic, but they'll treat it with something like tenactin or... Um, Oh, shoot. What's the other one? Lotrimin. Okay, so there's antifungals that they can treat the skin with. Okay, now another fungal disease is, um, is it, this is yeast. Shoot, yeast. Okay, so candidiasis. So a yeast infection. Okay, so candida albicans is the organism that causes this. So babies can get it in their throat, and they call it thrush. Um, it could be vaginitis, so a, a yeast infection in a woman. Um, sometimes you get it on your in on people get it on fingernails. And it's hard to get rid of on fingernails. Okay, now I have um, a couple two slides with eye disease eye diseases on them. Okay, so if we go here, the first one I have is ophthalmia neonatorum. So this is conjunctivitis of the newborn. Okay, so. Back in the day, okay, it was the leading cause of blindness of babies. So the babies would be born, and the mom would have one of these STDs, and it would get into the baby's eyes, okay, and then the babies would lose their eyesight. Um, nowadays, they'll screen the moms, so that's a normal part of... Um, a prenatal prenatal testing is they screen the moms for the STDs, and then they can treat the moms. Um, they used to use silver nitrate because that'll get rid of the gonorrhea in the baby's eyes, but they also will put give them an antibiotic, like an antibiotic ointment on the eyes. Okay, another eye disease that's bacterial is conjunctivitis. Conjunctivitis is pink eye. Right? So a whole bunch of different organisms could potentially cause it. The most common one is this Haemophilus aegyptus. Okay, so pink eye is super duper contagious, but they can treat it. Okay, so they can treat it, treat it with um, um, eye drops. 
Okay, then the third one that I have on here is trachoma, and it's caused by chlamydia trachomatis too. Okay, so um, this happens in developing countries. So the kids get it, and the fly lands on their face, and they spread it. Or the moms wash the kids' faces, all the kids' faces, with the cloth, with the same cloth that has the bacteria on it. And what it what it does is it um, inflames the eyelid, and then the eyelid starts to scar, and then the scarred eyelid starts rubbing the cornea, and that leads to blindness. And the flies like keep spreading it. Okay, so it can be treated with tetracycline. Um, and they'll try to prevent the flies, and then they'll do education. So they're working to eradicate this. Okay, another um, thing I have on here is river blindness. Okay, and I don't think this picture actually goes with river blindness, but river blindness, it's a roundworm, and it's transmitted by a black fly. So places where black flies are bad, and usually this is in tropical countries, um, the black fly will bite the person, and it can um, leave the worm in the person, and then the worm will develop, okay, and then it'll migrate, and eventually it'll, it'll go to the eye and cause blindness. So this is a thing that they're working on. So the Jimmy Carter Institute, he's been working on, on blindness and trying to prevent it in different worlds. So I think this is one that they're pretty sure will be eradicated soon.